Hi there, I am joined by Matt Goh, who has previously studied a Bachelor of Philosophy in Science here at the Australian National University. Thanks, Matt, for joining us. Can you share about what you're currently doing with your time? Yep, sure. Um, so I'm um, a theoretical physicist, and um, I'm currently working um, as a research assistant at the Australian National University. Um, so I'm working in uh, sort of quantum matter, Bose-Einstein condensates, um, and I'm uh, working on um, some theoretical work, some simulations to devise um, new protocols to produce Bose-Einstein condensates so that they can be used for um, applications like precision sensing and um, quantum computing and other applications. Mm. And is this what you were doing as part of the research in your degree itself? Uh, it's closely related. So um, I did quite a bit of research um, in my um, Bachelor of Philosophy degree, um, and the most significant part of that was my honours project, which was um, a one-year um, project at the end of my degree. Um, and so in this project, um, I was working on a closely related quantum control problem. Um, I'm currently working in the same research group using very similar techniques, but to a slightly different problem. Fantastic. And taking a step back, what made you decide to tackle a science degree in the first place? Um, so I think it comes down to a combination of two things. Um, the first and certainly most fundamental was a sort of fascination with um, discovering new knowledge, um, with learning, with advancing um, the frontiers of science. And um, second to that, I guess, was the fact that I'm quite technically minded and I wanted to pursue something like mathematics or physics or computer science. And um, I think uh, that combined with my interest in fundamental questions and reductionism brought me to physics. Mm. So as part of the research that you're working on at the moment and previously have worked on, uh, you've been involved in a lot of uh, global in like interaction, not just here within the ANU. Can you tell us about um, how you've worked across the globe with different researchers? Certainly. So um, ultimately, all good science ends up being global on some scale. And um, as part of my degree, um, I did a number of um, summer research programs um, across the world, um, including uh, two visits to the Weizmann Institute of Science. Um, and so these, uh, these programs, um, the uh, International Summer Science Institute at the Weizmann Institute, and then um, the uh, Kupsenet Getz Summer School, brought together um, students from across, across the globe, from many different countries, from many different disciplines, to study together, learn together, and conduct research in groups at the Institute. Um, the most recent of these, um, the second time I visited, um, I uh, actually ended up um, publishing a research paper with that group. Um, and so, again, coming back to this sort of global scientific collaboration, I'm now on a scientific paper um, between um, ANU and the Weizmann Institute. Um, and even after I left the Institute, we continued to review manuscripts and do science and analyse data. Um, and it never really stopped. Even just because you've left another country doesn't mean that the global process of science stops. Um, in uh, more recent times, um, I am just um, at the moment about two months away from starting my PhD at the University of Oxford, um, where I've been awarded a Rhodes Scholarship. Um, and um, even after I leave, um, I will be sort of bringing in techniques from across the world, working with my research group in Oxford, probably continuing to collaborate with my research group here in ANU, and um, building up a sort of global network of peers. Um, particularly in theoretical research, I find just having a wide bank of knowledge from across the globe is incredibly helpful. And so many of these um, collaborations, these interesting fusions of different fields of science start in, um, you know, conversations between global peers that eventually evolve into new disciplines, new research. Mm. Yeah. So you mentioned that you've been involved in a paper that's been published, and that was with a, uh, sounds like a global, you know, people from all across the world named on that paper. Can you tell us a little, little bit about the peer review process for that paper? Sure. Um, so peer review is also a very global process. Um, so this scientific paper we published, um, Already the authorship was quite diverse. We had, of course, an Australian, we had a French person, we had several Israelis. Um, but then on top of that, um, we uh, wrote the manuscript, um, we submitted it to an international journal, to an American journal, and then there was a blind peer review process in which the paper was forwarded to three reviewers from across the world. Um, they were anonymous, so we don't know who they were. Um, and um, they, uh, they proceeded to give feedback on our paper criticism on um, aspects of it that they were doubtful about and um, 
methods to improve it. And so not only was that there that core authorship group that worked together um, at the Weizmann Institute, but there was also these three unseen peer reviewers who provided their own feedback, their own commentary, who checked our work, who made sure that it was legitimate. Um, and um, so the number of countries involved in this work was uh, possibly up to six. Mm. It's really exciting that as part of your initial step into studying science, that you've been able to work within the international community that makes up science. So thank you very much for all your efforts uh, and you. research and best of luck with your further study when you travel overseas.